If you are a new or returning player to Albion Online, this is the guide that will put you ahead like no other. In just 4 hours, you will already be doing tier 7 content, which is high-end content that makes for great fame, silver and loot rewards. After following this guide, you will also be wearing tier 6.1 equipment, which is equal in power to tier 7 gear. And despite wearing such a great set on your first day already, you will have plenty of silver to afford multiple of these sets. In fact, I completed today's guide on two different characters, and the first one ended up with a total of 3.5 million silver. The second character ended up with about half of that, and that's only 4 hours of playing. So it's very likely you will also have your first couple million silver after following this guide, with many millions to come after. You will spend your first 15 minutes on doing the tutorial, and during this there is only one important moment. Once you are at the quest that tells you to buy tier 2 gear, you want to buy one cloth, one leather, and one plate piece for your armors. I went with the scholar cowl, mercenary jacket and soldier boots, along with the novices bow. This way you can easily unlock tier 3 for all your items during the next stage of this guide. If you finish the tutorial early like I have, you will have to wait a little, and once you have, you can choose the place you wish to travel to. For this guide, it doesn't matter which place you choose. I chose Highland Cross that leads to Marklock, because I think the map looks pretty, but you can choose any place you want to. Once you arrive, the second stage of this guide starts, which is doing all the quests you have available to you at the cross you decided to travel to. This will take about 40 minutes, and during this, you will get a couple important rewards, such as a 3-day premium subscription and an Adept's Royal Sigil. So it's very important you complete all the quests you have available to you at the cross. There is a tricky and crucial part during this stage, which is that you will have to equip Tier 3 equipment for a quest. This is one of those points I see a lot of new players get stuck at and waste a lot of their time. Prior to accepting this quest, you had to do an expedition, which rewarded you with 4k silver, but that may not be enough to buy all the tier 3 gear to complete the quest. So what you want to do is abandon this quest and go to the NPC named Carden to get your very first gold. You can then sell your gold for about 3k silver, which will be plenty to buy all the tier 3 items that you need to complete the quest. So return to Commander Flynn after exchanging your gold and accept the quest for tier 3 once again. The items you want to buy during this step are as follows. For your armors, you want the soldier helmet, mercenary jacket and soldier boots. And for your weapon and offhand, the spear and the torch. We will transition this build over to a tier 4 build later on and eventually to the tier 6.1 build you will be wearing at the end of this guide. Now at this point, I do have to mention that you can choose any weapon you want as long as it's a DPS weapon. So if you want to play a bow, sword or anything else, that's completely fine as well. The reason I recommend and choose the spear is because it's a very versatile weapon that's good in a lot of different content. I simply want you to have a first style build at the end of this guide that can successfully do many different things within the game. After completing the final quest and making your way to the big city, you will have received your Adept's Royal Sigil and a message that welcomes you to this sandbox game. And this is where the interesting bit of this guide starts that will get you going to tier 7 content in just 3 more hours. The first thing you want to do is repair all of your items and then sell everything you have on the marketplace. Make sure to create sell orders as you go about selling your items as this will make for much more profits. The only exception is the Adept's Royal Sigil, which you want to sell directly as you need the silver right away. Once you have sold the Sigil, you will have close to 50k silver, which is the money you will use to buy your very first T4 set. But before buying the items, you first want to make sure you can wear them. So head to the Destiny board and find the items you've leveled so far and use your learning points to unlock T4 for all of these items. So if you decided to play the build I recommend, you want to level Spear Fighter, Leather Jacket Fighter, Blade Helmet Fighter, Blade Boots Fighter, and Torch Fighter. Now that you can wear them, it's time to buy them. You want to buy all of the following T4 items. Guardian Helmet, Mercenary Jacket, Soldier Boots, Adapt Spear, and a Tier 4 Torch. 
since the price and quality doesn't differ too much, you can buy all of these items as excellent quality. The higher the quality of an item, the more item power you get and the stronger you are. You also want to buy a tier 3 cape, bag and riding horse, two catfish and a stack of tier 2 healing potions. After buying all of these items and completing your loadout, you should still have some left over silver. We will first use this to buy tier 4 runes, which we will use to enchant the gear and make it even stronger. To enchant your items, you will need a total of 384 runes. And then the final item we are going to buy with our silver, which are solo dungeon maps. You want to buy only two of them and they have to be of tier 4 level. Now head to the artifact foundry and enchant your weapon, your offhand and your three armor pieces. Now you have your very first tier 4.1 loadout with an average item power of 800. Now it's time to start slaying some mobs and start progressing for real. Our first goal is to unlock Expert Reaver so we can advance from tier 4 content to tier 5 content. First, click on your dungeon map and use it. By doing so, you will spawn a randomized solo dungeon somewhere near you. You can look at both the world map and mini map to see where it's located. Simply make your way to the solo dungeon and enter it. Once inside, you want to confirm the mobs have a sword icon that says enemies in this dungeon are 16% stronger. This confirms you are in the dungeon you spawned yourself and you didn't enter a different dungeon by accident. Before you start bashing everything, let me quickly tell you about the build you are using so you can bash even harder. If you already know this build because you watched one of my recent videos, you can skip to the next chapter. This spear build is a very good build for solo dungeons among many other contents. When you use your Q, you get charges, and each charge increases your auto attack damage. So you definitely want to auto attack as much as possible in between your abilities. Your W does huge AoE damage as you are channeling it. So once you start using it, don't move unless you have to dodge something. Your E ability does damage based on the amount of charges you have. Ideally, you want to have 3 charges before using your E ability. Aside from doing lots of damage, your E ability can also interrupt spellcasting and can also be used for mobility. So use your E as you see fit at any given moment. Your R ability, which is from your armor, gives you a buff that heals you when you do damage. Since this ability has a timer to it, it's best to use it in combination with your W. So when you need healing, first use your R and then channel your W. On your helmet, you normally use a shield for some extra defenses. But because we don't have enough energy regeneration at this moment, you want to use energy regain. Whenever you need energy, simply channel this ability. On your boots, you want to use rejuvenating sprint, which makes for some extra healing and mobility. During your dungeon runs, you want to use the catfish to get extra health regeneration between the packs of mobs. This way you can clear the dungeons much quicker and without having to wait for your health to go back up. This buff lasts for 30 minutes, so you can do multiple dungeons with every food. On average, you should be doing 2-3 to three dungeons per catfish. If you face some worthy bosses, such as rare and legendary ones, you may have some difficulties killing them. Whenever you struggle with bosses, you can use one of your healing potions to make the fights a bit easier. As you go about doing your dungeons, you will have to travel from location to location in the open world. And one great thing about the open world are the roaming mobs. So if you see any mobs with a glow around them as you travel, take a few seconds to kill them as they make for a lot of fame and silver. Sometimes they can even drop valuable loot. Killing mobs in the open world is something you want to be doing whenever you have the chance to do so. The reason I'm emphasizing this is because it's just that important. You can even decide to hunt evolved mobs specifically without doing the dungeons, but I want to give you a guaranteed way to hit tier 7 content in just a matter of hours, which is why you want to be doing both solo dungeons as well as kill evolved mobs whenever you spot them. It should take you about two solo dungeons before you hit Expert Reaver. Reaver levels are very important as they allow you to do higher tier content. As you hit Expert Reaver, you can now start doing tier 5 content. So if you are in a solo dungeon, simply finish the dungeon and grab your loot before heading back to town. At this point, I have about 50k in silver and 50k in items that I can sell. As the drops from the dungeons are fully random, you may have more or you may have less. 
if you have less than 50k silver, you may want to do an additional dungeon or hunt some mobs in the open world. Once you have done so, return to town, repair all of your items, and put everything you looted up for sale. You are now going to start doing tier 5 solo dungeons since you have Expert Reaver unlocked. You won't change much about your loadout, but we will do some slight adjustments to improve it. First of all, buy a tier 4 cape and 48 tier 4 runes to enchant your cape. Secondly, buy 144 tier 4 souls to enchant your weapon even further. And finally, buy 3 solo dungeon maps that are of tier 5 level. Top up on your catfish and make sure you have 2 of those. And if you used healing potions so far, you can fill your stack back up to 10 again. Now go to the artifact foundry, enchant all of your items and pop your very first tier 5 solo dungeon map. You will now do a combination of tier 5 solo dungeons and killing evolved mobs until you can join faction warfare. Before we get to that however, I want to share something interesting that happens that could also happen to you. As I enter my first tier 5 dungeon, I have people follow me inside that try to hard flag and kill me. This is my cue to teleport out of my dungeon and spawn a new map if I have to. Now since I am in the yellow zone, I will only get knocked down if they manage to beat me, but I won't die and I won't lose all of my gear. The yellow zone is still a newbie friendly area where you can safely learn the basics of the game. Nonetheless, if you get knocked down, you lose durability on your items, which makes for higher repair costs. You also have to wait a few minutes to get back up again. So even in the yellow zone, you should do your best to avoid getting knocked down by other players. As I teleport out, so do they, which tells me the dungeon is empty, so I go back in once again. This time, however, I decide to lock the dungeon behind me. 60 seconds after the last person enters a solo dungeon in the yellow zone, the entrance disappears from the world map, so no one else can enter your dungeon any longer, and you can do your content really safely. Normally, I wouldn't do this or recommend you to do this in the yellow zone, but since I had contact already, I didn't want to waste my time any longer and made sure to close the dungeon behind me. So simply wait for a minute as you enter the dungeon to make sure no one else follows you inside. In my second T5 solo dungeon, I face Ancient Hero, which is an epic boss that is pretty tough to beat. To increase your chances with difficult bosses, you simply want to change Energy Regain to Emergency Shield on your helmet to have an extra defensive. Later on, you will be on Emergency Shield permanently as we go about fixing our energy issue altogether. After doing about 3 solo dungeons on tier 5 level, you will get the Faction Warfare notification. At this point, simply finish up your dungeon once again and head back to town. And remember, if you see evolved mobs on the way, make sure to kill them. Once you are back in town, you want to find the Faction War Master of your city. Enlist with them and then flag up for your faction. Doing this will make you hostile to players of other factions, but since you're still playing in the yellow zone, this doesn't change anything for you. You do, however, get a faction buff that provides you additional fame, silver, and loot, which speeds up your progress. Whilst you're in town, sell any items you have and make sure you have two catfish and three dungeon maps with you. After doing these three dungeons whilst faction flagged and killing some mobs in the open world, you will reach Master Reaver, which is awesome because now you can already start doing tier 6 content. Your next and final goal from this point on is to reach Grandmaster Reaver and start doing tier 7 content on your first day already. But for this, you have to go through the tier 6 grind first. Although we are going to repeat the whole solo dungeon and killing mobs in the open world bit to reach our final goal, there will be a noticeable change to our gameplay moving forward. From here on, we are going to start playing in the black zone. Before the alarms start going off and your anxiety levels increase to an all-time high, let me tell you that you can do this at your own pace. If at this point, for whatever reason, you don't feel comfortable going into the black zone, I highly recommend you continue doing solo dungeons whilst faction flagged and you continue killing roaming mobs in the yellow zones. You will still progress this way in both silver and fame in a safe way albeit much slower compared to the black zone. The reason why I think it's alright to go into the black zone at this point is because the loadout we are using is only worth 66k silver. 
I already have enough silver to afford an additional 3 sets, and if we count the items I'm selling on the marketplace, I can afford even more sets from the silver I will get from there. If you think this many sets are too little to go into the black zone, simply farm silver in the yellow zone until you feel like you have enough. But keep in mind, even if you die, the entire loadout you're going to lose is only worth 66k silver, which is something you can easily farm in the yellow zone anytime you want to. Although the black zone is full loot, it does make for the best rewards in the game by far. The difficulty of the mobs and content is the same, but you will progress much quicker and make much more silver because of the black zone bonus. So once you are ready, simply buy 3 solo dungeon maps of tier 6 level this time and go to the realm gate. I will make sure to give you some tips along the way to increase your chances of success. Once you enter the portal, the first thing you want to do is use your solo dungeon map. Since the dungeon map rules have changed, you don't have to be in the same tier map any longer, which is a huge advantage for newer players that are going into the black zone for the very first time. As you can see, my dungeon just spawned in the very same zone I'm at. Right after spawning your dungeon, you want to interact with one of the shrines around the portal. This will give you a buff that makes you fully invincible and invisible. This way, no one can see you or interact with your character in any way. Or in other words, you are completely safe as long for the duration of the buff. After taking the buff, head towards your dungeon and maybe scout around the dungeon first to see whether there are any other players. If you don't see anyone, simply enter the dungeon. Once you are inside the dungeon, you now want to wait 90 seconds for the dungeon to close. If you remember, earlier in this video I said you have to wait 60 seconds, but that was for the blue and yellow zone. In the red and black zones, you have to wait 90 seconds. After these 90 seconds, the entrance to the dungeon will disappear, and no one else can ever enter the dungeon after you, meaning you will be fully safe inside your dungeon, even within the black zone. One habit I've picked up is to press log out as soon as I enter. Once the timer hits 210, I know 90 seconds have passed and I'm good to go. If someone follows you inside within these 90 seconds, first look at what they do. If they start attacking you, you have two options. Your first option is to take on the challenge and fight back. And your second option is to leave the dungeon, mount up and move on to your next dungeon. If you want to go with the second option, which is what I would recommend you to do, make sure not to attack the other player, since otherwise you won't be able to leave the dungeon because you'll be in combat. You will already notice the huge difference in fame and silver gain while killing mobs in the solo dungeons throughout the black zone, even more so once you start defeating bosses and start looting their chests. When it comes to loot, you can get drops up to two tier higher than the content you are doing. So when you do tier 5 solo dungeons in the yellow zone, the maximum loot that can drop is tier 7. And when you do tier 6 solo dungeons in the black zone, the maximum loot that can drop is tier 8. During my first run, one of the first chests I opened had 8.2 boots in them, which would not be possible in the yellow zone. The loot and fame starting from here on is miles better than anything from before, and you will literally make millions of silver and fame every day by only investing 66k per loadout. After doing your dungeons, you want to go back to the city. Or maybe you got some valuable loot and you want to secure that, which is another good reason to go back. Either way, you want to head back to the portal zone and take the shrine once again. The shrines can be found around the portal, but also at every exit of the portal zone. Therefore, traveling within the portal zone can be done fully safely. Make sure to remember this and utilize the shrine at all times. Once you head back, you can consider upgrading your gear if you want to. This is fully optional and up to you. For the purpose of this guide, I upgraded all my armors and offhand 2.2 and buy a tier 5 spear which I upgrade as well. I also buy a Limhurst cape and upgrade that to have a new passive ability that will replenish my energy every couple minutes. This way I can change my Guardian Helmet's ability to Emergency Shield permanently. Now all of these changes do increase the cost of your loadout and although it will make your runs a bit easier and faster, you will still be fine without them. So once again, this is fully optional. Perhaps grind some silver first before you start doing this. Make sure to buy a few dungeon maps again and head back to the realm gate. 
As I go back, I notice I still have a cooldown on the portal shrine, and this is something you really have to pay attention to. This simply indicates it's been too recent that I used the shrine buff, and I have to wait a little before I can benefit from it once again. Once this cooldown is over, you can enter the black zone, pop your map, take the shrine, and get going once again. Just like the solo dungeons in the black zone provide better rewards, so do the roaming mobs. Given it's far more dangerous to kill them in the black zone, they are still very worth doing. So if you see any evolved mobs with a glow around them, make sure to kill them if there aren't any other players around you. One pro tip I want to give you here is that you should keep your mount up at all times so that if someone dismounts on you, you can jump on your mount and get away. If you are getting hit whilst you try to mount up, simply pop your guardian helmet's emergency shield ability, which will allow you to mount up safely. After killing some roaming mobs and doing about 6 solo dungeons in the black zone at tier 6 level, you will reach Grandmaster Reva. You can now officially start doing tier 7 content. Head back to the city because I'm about to show you how cheap and profitable the black zone can really be. I've bought a tier 4 excellent set and enough runes to enchant the items. As you can see my equipment and inventory together cost only 55k silver and that includes the tier 7 dungeon map that's about 12k on its own. After enchanting my gear and following all the steps I've teach you so far to enter my very first tier 7 dungeon. Although I have to be more careful with taking damage, it's completely possible to clear this tier 7 dungeon in a 4.1 set on a brand new character. Honestly, if you want to, you can follow this entire guide in a 4.1 set from start to finish. Once you reach Grandmaster Eva, you can even do your tier 7 dungeons in a cheap 4.1 set. Although it's not the most optimal or effective way of doing things, it is a possible and realistic option for any new player that wants to overcome their fear of the black zone in a cheap way. Simply upgrade your gear gradually as you gain more silver and always make sure you can afford multiple sets in case you die. As promised, aside from doing tier 7 content, you can now also wear tier 6 gear. By enchanting it to point 1, you will reach 1100 item power on your very first day of playing. You could of course keep enchanting it up to point 3 and reach even higher item power levels. However, I don't think that's wise or necessary at this stage. The cards are now in your hands and you decide what you want to do with them. If it were me, I would buy a couple tier 7 solo dungeon maps and start doing them with this 6.1 set. You can even reach tier 8 on your first day by following this guide. By now you know exactly what to do and understand how progressing works. It's only a matter of time for you to get insane amounts of silver and reach high levels of masteries. If you want to, you can also start doing other content with this build as it's good for all types of solo content. Just make sure you try things out with a cheap set first and that you can afford multiple sets at any given moment. If this guide served you well, please give it a like and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful journey and I'll see you next time.